Hi guys, Ronnie Grayer here. I'd like to say hi to everybody in the big shave, razor and brush, uh, shave market, uh, wet shaver society. Um, I know I'm forgetting some of them, but uh, there's a whole bunch of groups out there. So if you're not participating in these groups, I would encourage you to do that. A lot of good information. Everyone's there to help, and um, it's a lot of fun. So anyway, today I'm going to do a straight shave, and uh, we'll see how that goes. It's been about three days since I've shaved. It looks pretty rough, and you can see it's much thicker over here than it is over here, which these are my trouble spots when I shave. So what do I have today? Well, let's see. We'll start off with, um, I've got this Seville Row brush. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but this was highly recommended by Anthony Esposito. And I got this actually from Mike Torgiano. There's the Seville Row. There we go. Um, so thanks, Mike, for that. And I've got my um, GP Scuttle here that people seem to really like. I believe it's a G12, but I got this on one of the groups as well. Actually, I got this from Chris Bailey. So thank you, Chris. And you can see on the bottom, all it says is GP, and I think it's got a 13, which indicates the year that it was made, but I don't even know. This thing is filled with hot water from my tap, and I soaked my brush. I've also got some uh, George, I, I think this is George F. Trumper. I hear people say G-O-F Trumper, but I'm assuming it's George. Um, limes Skin Food. I'm going to use that as a pre. I'm going to put that on in just a second. I'm going to wet my face a little bit. I've just come out of the shower, and um, face is drying a little bit. Um, after the shave, I've got my Auto Shave Sandalwood uh, Aftershave Balm, which is just fantastic. It's a little bit pricey, but you know what? I'm finding that a lot of these products are not so cheap and people talk about the auto shave and they love to poke at them. Um, do what you want, say what you will. I like this stuff. It works well for me. I've got my uh, Shave Nation alum, nothing special, just some alum, but uh, um, what's his name? Fat Boy, Geo Fat Boy, um, kind of got me started with his videos, so him and Mantic 59. Um, and I might do a head shave today also. Actually, let me grab my People love to talk about this, the thing you love to hate too, um, my head blade, my little toy there. Um, this is a four blade version, I'll pull that off. And I'm gonna do, I may not uh, run the video for this, but uh, I've got about five days, six days on my head there, which is way too long. It might even be about four or five, I think. So I'll shave with that at some point. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, get my face wet and um, put on that pre-shave. Actually, that trumpers can be used as a pre or a post. All right, I don't have a towel here, let me grab something. Um, some people use it as both. Um, I'm gonna use it as a pre today, so we'll put a little bit of that on. And we'll see how that goes. I like it, it smells really nice, it's not cheap. I got some of this as a sample one time and I had to have it. I actually bought some sandalwood recently. I haven't used it yet. I'm funny like that. I seem to want to use up this one first. So let me just rinse off my hands here. And the next thing I have to do is, oh, I forgot to tell you guys what soap I'm using. The highly anticipated Triple X from Razor Rock. Got that recently from Italian Barber with everybody else that went absolutely wild when it came out. I had actually gotten some of this in the pass around from Mike LeBlanc at the Big Shave and loved it, used it I think twice and sent it on its way. And then of course I tried to order some that was back in April or May and it was on back order and back order and back order and then finally when it came out, um, or when it was returned to the stock, I jumped on it and got myself some triple X. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go ahead and load my brush, got the brush that's been soaking. I'm going to try this Marco thing that they talk about where I just kind of swirl my brush around here without putting a lot of pressure. Although this brush here is so soft, I don't like to put pressure on it anyway. It works really well. Um, you just load the brush and let's see if we can get some soap going there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, go a little more. And actually this tin, or this tub rather, doesn't spill over the side, so I like that. And yeah. We'll go a little more, put a little bit of pressure on that soap, and 
and this is um, this is going to be my about fourth time using this soap here because I just all of a sudden I have a whole bunch. So that's loaded up kind of okay. We'll see how that goes. This soap here it doesn't take a lot. I recently saw uh, the discussion about do you cover your soaps when they're done? Do you let them dry? I actually like to leave it uncovered and let it dry. Um, and then Matt Glass made a good point about not covering it all the way, so um, you know, covering it part way so stuff doesn't fall in. So that was a good point too, and I actually did that. It feels funny just leaving it wide open to the elements. So let's try to build some lather up in this scuttle here. I'm not gonna. That, that's the only thing about the scuttle is it's a little bit bulky, so you know, you don't hold it up. It kind of sits on the counter. But and also, um, I learned the recent. Uh, alternative method to building some lather in the bowl rather than do circular motions. Chris Bailey was talking about kind of a back and forth motion and that's a nice thing about these clay bowls is that they have these nubs and ridges and things like that in the bowl that help you to build lather. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my scuttle here and that should do it. I should be able to get a nice lather going. The last thing I struck, I actually touched up my razor with a 12K stone that I just got from Straight Razor Designs. Thank you, Lynn Abrams. I'm still learning how to use that with my interaction on the forums with several people, um, giving me tips, Eric Schuett and Anthony Esposito most notably, um, and a couple others. Eric Sletton, I think, Eric Lyons, um, giving me a hand there. So I'm not quite honing, but trying to put a little bit uh, on the edge. so I don't have to get it honed all the time. My strapping has gotten much better, and that'll It'll dull and edge fast if you put too much pressure when you strop or things like that and I was doing that for a while so I got a nice lather going here with the triple X I don't know if you can see that and um, the stuff just smells fantastic it just comes alive so I've got that I strapped my razor but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a few laps on the strap now which is what I've been told by a lot of people and I found that myself if you don't strap it, you can feel it. So, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. I've got my, you can't see it, I got my straight razor designs uh, premium four. Just a quick 10 laps on that um, English bridle. And what I'm going to do is just grab a little bit of. Alum. Get that going. Get my lather going here. Yeah, my face got a little dry while I was yakking. So we'll just add a little bit of water to the brush. And that should compensate. Get a few drops on there. Hopefully this will be in good shape because I got lots of hair and it goes a lot better than when you have just one day's growth, I find. And get this blade going. So, you guys have probably heard of this before, but um, take the alum and go ahead and wet your fingertips. And that'll help you get a grip when you're stretching your skin. Um, actually, works pretty well. Skin stretching when you're shaving, especially with a straight. I even did it with a DE, it helps a lot. I always did it with a DE. Too, and I got a much closer shave. I watched some of these uh, folks shaving with the DE at a very high rate of speed and uh, they get a good result, but not for me. So let's try this here. One thing I notice is, well, you can cut that ear every time. 
and that thing will bleed like crazy. But be careful with it. It's here. There you go. The thing about the straight is, boy, it gives you a lot of audible feedback, unlike the Chevette. Um, a lot of audible feedback. And now I'm just going to give this a quick wipe here. Um, and for those of you that don't know, it's a good idea to try when you rinse it, um, not to get water into the into the handle, into the scales. I didn't even show you this, by the way. I'm sorry. This is my gold dollar, uh, straight from Bilts of Grains. Um, just, it's a very inexpensive razor, but that shouldn't mean anything. It's just the price. It really does a nice job. I like this razor a lot. I love these scales, and they're very sturdy. I noticed some of the other razors, the scales are kind of flimsy, so. I don't have a lot to say this go around. I mean, I'm just shaving. So, what I'll, I'll be zipping through a lot of this anyway. I'm going to go ahead and go up on my neck. That seems to be easiest to do, less irritation. And the other thing I found out is the stretching, boy. Sometimes you stretch down, sometimes you stretch across, and you have to kind of play with that and see what works better for you. But if you only stretch in one direction, I found that um, it's not as effective. So, play around with that. the side here on the neck and then I'll head on over and get some more face. Shaving going here. How many times you see it, um, sometimes people forget the significance, the importance of uh, not only stretching your skin with your fingers, but with your hands, but contorting your face. That kind of stuff there, um, puffing out your cheeks and all that really helps a lot. So if no one's going to see you in the bathroom, feel free to do that. It's going to help you a lot. I've seen people with the DE puff out their mustache more. With the straight, it's easier to do the mustache area, I think. As long as you don't go up what they call the fool's pass, and there goes your schnazola. You don't want to do that. And of course, while I was talking to you guys and being super casual, I got a little leaper under my nose. I'm actually going to try to put some um, styptic on there now. That way it'll stop bleeding right away. You know, it's not much. Um, that seems to help. So I'm going to do that real quick. Broke my styptic, so I got another one recently from Maggard when I ordered my wife's DE starter kit. I ordered uh, styptic instead of an alum because she didn't want either one. biggest thing with a straight is to watch your angle. It needs to be really shallow. You know, you don't want to be perpendicular or even 45 degrees. You want to be almost vertical. And then you'll open it up a little bit as you go. But start off almost vertical and you'll find your angle. But if you start off too wide, you have to really constantly focus on angle and pressure. Um, just like with the DE, if 
but um, you know the straight is a little less forgiving than the DE obviously there's no safety bar and so you have to be careful there so I just throw that out there I mean a lot of you guys probably um, know what to do with a straight but for some of you that may be less familiar um, and I'm by means no expert at all uh, by any means excuse me no expert at all but um, these are just some of the things I want to throw out there Watching from my ear, so I don't And you can see here, I mean, you can build up more or less on the blade. Some people rinse it more often. Some people use a, a towel or a sponge to avoid any chance of getting water. Um, in the scales or anything like that. And I keep wiping off the blade also. You don't want to have excess water on the blade. Um, it'll, it won't rust necessarily, but it'll develop little sort of patina, uh, discoloration, things like that. And it could rust too, so you want to be careful. And this razor has a little Kind of a point on the end, which is very helpful around the mustache and the lip and stuff. I like it a lot. I don't know if it was the only thing is it always seems to rub a little bit on the straw, but I can work with that. I don't know if if, um, if that's if that's actually the design or if it's just the way it is, but it works. It helps me a lot. That little point. So let's finish this thing up. dogs outside barking, my wife's yelling. Um, what's interesting to me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do another pass, but I'm gonna stop the camera and then come back and talk about it. But before I go, what's interesting to me, you can't really see it, but what I find is a lot of times I can see my beard, but I can't feel it. And I look in the mirror and I'm like, ah, I missed all that. And when I feel it, there's nothing there. So it's kind of strange. Um, and that's kind of frustrating, but I guess that's just how it goes sometimes. So I'm gonna stop this thing. I'll do another pass. I'll come back and. Uh, kind of close it out. So guys, I did another pass, um, probably about the same. I didn't really, I did a little against the grain, straight up and down right here from south to north. This area here, um, from this little cleft up to my lip, no matter what I do, if I don't uh, pay some extra attention and go in a different direction there, and usually the best way to go is, across, is, is straight up and down or from south to north. Um, every time I kind of parse my lips a little bit, I can feel that hair there. That area is tough, right in there, especially just below the lip. No matter how many times I shave, um, if I don't make an attempt to go from south to north, it's going to be a problem. So I did that, got everything. Uh, I did a total of two passes. And that second pass really doesn't do a whole lot for me. And I'm not trying to get baby butt smooth because it's going to grow right back anyway, as long as it looks good. Um, uh, Mike Friedberg recently made a great uh, statement in his video, and he said, you know, when you come to work, no one is there at the door of the building to inspect your shave. So, you know, as long as it's it looks good, that's fine. No one's going to go around there going each way with a credit card or their finger to see how you're doing. Some people want to get a little closer, that's fine. Um, but that's all I did today. I still have to do a head shave. So I'm going to rinse my face here and then do a little post, and then I'll shave my head. It won't be on video. Um, maybe I'll do that another time. Give a, give a rinse with, uh, with hot water. I don't think I let the water get hot here. It got kind of cold on me. But uh, I'll give a hot rinse and then a cold rinse. And then we'll do a little post. There's the 
भाग is the cold, and um, that weeper under my nose actually was bleeding a little bit more during the shave, but it seems to have stopped now, which is great. So, just kind of pat my face dry here. The other thing about under the nose with a straight, you can really get in there. I know with a DE, you have to kind of push your nose every which way and contort your face. And that's what I like about the straight. I like a lot of things about the straight, like I don't have to worry about which blade I'm gonna use because it doesn't change, I really like that. Some people will use this as a post. Uh, I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna go right to the bomb because my face doesn't feel, oh, I guess I forgot the alum. Let me do that. See how my face actually feels. I'm saying it doesn't feel bad. Let's find out. What's interesting is, even under the nose, that alum didn't have any sensation. And I told some people this, but recently I've discovered when I returned to the straight after being with that feather artist club for a while, that no matter what I did with that feather, there was always some stinging from the alum. And with the straight, it's rare. Um, and that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the exception that you get some feedback, not the rule. So I got no feedback now, which is fantastic. Rinse that alum off. And um, I'll put a little of that balm on. And actually, Since I'm going to shave my head, I think I'm going to put the, the Lime's skin food on. And then when I'm all done, because when I shave my head, there's going to be stuff dripping down. So I'll save the bomb for my nice dry face at the end. So I'll put some of this skin food on. Not a whole lot. goes a long way. And then I'll be ready for a head shave. Well, um, again, I just wanted to say that um, this this says um, 200 China right on there. And that's all I really know. People ask me what kind of a razor it is. There are certain designations. I don't know what it is. Bill puts the scales on. He does a little bit of customization depending on what you want. Um, and I can't say enough. I mean, if you want to try a straight razor, Contact Bill, um, he'll get you going for very little money, I mean very little. And then you can even, you don't even have to buy a strop, you can, there's things you can do there, um, but if not, you can get a very inexpensive strop. You don't want to strop the first time. When that razor is shave ready, especially coming from someone like that who's honed it, you don't want to strop, you want to shave the first time, but then you need to strop prior to every shave after that. And like I said, sometimes people strop at the end, um, and then they just do a little touch up at the beginning, that razor will tell you. When you put it on your face and you start to shave, if it's starting to grab a little bit and you know it's a sharp razor, um, then it needs to be stropped. And that stropping will um, smooth out that edge a little bit. Um, it's not something you can really see with your eye, but you can feel it. It's a little bit like a sawtooth. And then when you strop it, it becomes a nice smooth edge. So, um, you know, that's what I wanted to say. But this, this, I actually won this thing on the Wet Shaver Review. Aaron Schechter runs uh, contests over there on a weekly basis. Great stuff. And early on, I won this thing. And at the time, I was toying with getting a straight razor, and I was intimidated by all of the maintenance aspects of it. Um, over time, that stuff starts to not bother you anymore. But um, anyway, thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Bill. Um, and if you have any comments, um, please feel free to leave them at the bottom. Uh, if you want to subscribe, that's fine. I've got a few videos up. And um, like uh, Gio says, have a great day and have a great shave.